Welcome to a slideshow on the lighthouses of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and a few other attractions we saw as we went from lighthouse to lighthouse. This tour was organized by the U.S. Lighthouse Society in 2013. Puerto Rico is an island with some small islands around it next to it. The SJ at the top is San Juan. We fly into San Juan and then we go clockwise around the island looking at all the lighthouses returning to San Juan where we fly home from. This is the flag of Puerto Rico, and in 1493, Columbus set foot on the island. In the 1500s, the Spanish built settlements around there, and that explains why some of the lighthouses have a Spanish uh, influence and a Spanish architectural look. Uh, the years that followed, the Dutch and the English fought over the island, and eventually it resulted in the Spanish ceding the island to the United States in 1898. In 1917, the uh, citizens of Puerto Rico became citizens of the United States. We also established a democracy form of government there. In 1952, the island became a commonwealth. And that explains why, as you go around the island and you use U.S. currency, it is fine. The post office displays the U.S. flag, Old Glory, and the U.S. Coast Guard has established a base on the island. This is a picture of the group that was on this particular tour. Um, good luck trying to find people you know. These were our tour leaders on the trip, Bill and Judy Newbloom. They did a great job getting us all around the island, seeing all the lighthouses, a clean bed every night, three meals a day. The easiest way to get to Puerto Rico is to fly in, and you fly into San Juan. The interesting thing is at the airport, there's somebody there passing out a small piece of paper, which basically explains how far it is to each of the hotels and miles, and what the basic charge is for per person plus suitcases, so nobody should get ripped off. Not everyone flies in. This looks like the kind of transportation Christopher Columbus may have arrived in. This is a Puerto Rican license plate. And it's interesting, while we were there, the story was told that Henry Ford was involved back in the beginning when they were developing the island. And Henry did not want mass transportation. He preferred to have vehicles. Later on in the slideshow, you'll see who won. These are pictures of San Juan, and some of these were actually taken from my hotel room. You notice some familiar American landmarks.
Living in the Northeast, I found this fire station fascinating. No doors, none at all. They do have room on the side, though, for compartments to store equipment. They do have police cars, and it's interesting. They seem to be driving around the city very slow with the lights flashing on the top. The police also travel around the island in shorts and on segways, and this picture was taken in March. These large buildings were all over the place, and they were either hotels or condominiums. You are now on the other side of the buildings you were just looking at, and you can see you're basically at sea level. So hurricanes, tidal surges, you get into trouble real quick. This place looks very safe with all of the patrolling. We're now in Old San Juan, and we're going to be working our way across Old San Juan on our way to the first lighthouse, which is in the same city. You notice the nice brick roads. This is one of the restaurants we ate in. This is a beautiful government building. This is part of our National Park Service and the first of the 15 lighthouses we're going to see in Puerto Rico. We're on the grounds of the National Park Service, and this is their administrative building. This is El Moro, and like in the United States, we have built lighthouses on top of forts also. Where the red arrow is, that is El Moro Lighthouse. And you can see that that helps ships out in the ocean to find where the port is.
Now, look at the ladder there on the left. If you were the lighthouse keeper here, that's the ladder you would use to go all the way up to the top if you had to uh, adjust the weather vane, paint the ventilator ball, paint the roof of the lantern room. Uh, needless to say, that was not open for tourists. These are the steps that lead up to the base of the lantern room. This is how you would get up to the lantern room if it was open. Remember now, this was a fort, so we're going to take just a brief walk around and look at some of the things to do with the fort. This shows you where the soldiers would have actually lived and slept and had their bunk, if you will. That brown building sticking up there is actually a lookout tower where the sentry on duty would be looking around to see if any trouble is coming. And you can see if they had any casualties, they wouldn't have far to go to the cemetery. Not surprising, when you look at the lighthouse after dark, there's a light in the lantern room. Many of the commercial vehicles are painted up real fancy. This is our second lighthouse, Cabo San Juan. Now, this one is fixed up very nicely, and you're going to notice something very interesting here. We're going to get up to the top of the roofs of the building, but we're not going to get into the lantern room in most of these lighthouses. You notice the nice flooring they have in these lighthouses. This lighthouse also has a nice museum on the first floor. And when you look up here at the ceiling, notice that it, it's made out of wood. We're going to come back to that later on in the slideshow. Excitement builds because you see these are the stairs going up to the second floor. They are beautifully maintained and they are not blocked. Notice we're now up on the roof, and if you look at the wall that goes around, this is actually part of the structure. It wasn't like a safety fence or something they put up as an afterthought. Uh, so they intended to let people up here evidently. Now, you get two things. You get a beautiful view of the area, including out to the ocean, and you are a little closer to the lantern room, so you get a better look at that. There is no Fresnel lens, but you are able to get a nice picture here, and you're up close. Mm -hmm. 
This ball at the top is referred to as the ventilator ball, and what it does is it vents the smoke from the kerosene lantern inside. And what is clever is when the rain comes down, if the rain hits the ball, it goes around it, but it will drop off before it goes in the hole. And uh, it will not, uh, like a chimney, go down and extinguish the kerosene lamp. But remember, these things are near the um, water, so you usually get a breeze going one way or the other. So the breeze going by the ball holes creates a little vacuum that sucks the smoke out. Remember, Puerto Rico is made up of a big island and then some smaller islands around it. And what we're going to do is go see a lighthouse on one of these smaller islands. And this is basically the ferry boat that we go back and forth on. This lighthouse, Punta Mules, looks great from a distance, but if you notice the bottom part of the windows, that looks like it's boarded up with sheets of plywood. Talk about welcoming the tourists with open arms. Some folks came over from the maintenance department of the town with crowbars, and they proceeded to pry off the sheets of plywood so we could get inside the lighthouse. Once we got in with our cameras and flash cameras, you can see this is the inside of the front door. They've got this boarded up, so they've made this place pretty secure. The inside really is not fixed up at all, but this looks like uh, at one time they had a display here of different types of boats. We are up on the roof again, and if you look at the lantern room, it doesn't look like it's in very good shape. Uh, part of the railing here is even missing. The stairs were actually uh, available, so we actually walked up a few steps and took a look, but it didn't look too good, and it looks like an awful lot of it is rusting out. It certainly does need an awful lot of work up here in the lantern room. While we were on the island, we also visited this small museum. One of the things they did in this small museum is they gave us a talk about the construction. Concrete walls. But then overhead, they have wooden beams, and we're going to come back to that in relation to lighthouses uh, later on in the program. Now that we're finished on this island, we get back on the ferry boat and go back to the main island. On our way to the next lighthouse, we went right by this little restaurant on the side of the road, but our whole group wouldn't have fit in there anyway. Punta Tuna makes a beautiful picture from the beach. This picture was taken from an airplane, and you'll see more of that toward the end of the show. Uh, but you can see the Punta Tuna sticks out on the uh, end of this little peninsula.
You can walk right up to this lighthouse all around it, take pictures, and we're going to get in it and climb it, too. This lighthouse, as you can see, has a Fresnel lens in it. On the first floor, the building was fixed up very nice on the inside, but there was no furniture. Remember now that these lighthouses were built in the 1800s. We didn't have air conditioning back then. And if you look at this door, up above it, you've got that panel. But those are actually holes in the panel. So when you shut the door, you have air circulating through as long as you've got somewhere in the building doors that go out and can let the air in from the outside. Excitement builds. Our tour guide here, you notice, has opened up what we spot as the uh, tube you see in the center there where the weights come down to rotate the Fresnel lens up there. So this looks like it's going to be a pretty good deal. What you are looking here on the right are the weights and those weights are hooked onto the chain which is inside the tube and the door is usually closed. They work on the principle of a grandfather clock. The weights get wound to the top and as they come down through the tube they will rotate the lens which gives you the effect of having a flashing light. Up we go. Who could have guessed? But we're up on the roof again. But again, no Fresnel lens. We can't get any higher than the roof. Another cemetery, but it looks awfully crowded. This lighthouse was not open, but we could walk all around it and take pictures. This is what it looks like from the air. Very interesting street lights on the property. This looks like it could be either a cistern or a tank for kerosene for illumination. Now, the building was locked, but if you look at this here, they've got these shutters on the window, but it appears as though there's room at the bottom to look through. Turn your flash on and your camera Put it underneath there in the opening and take some pictures and see what you get. This is as close as we're going to get to the lantern room.
You see the sign on the building says American Health Medicare, and you remember they are U.S. citizens. They do a lot of painting of the roads concrete, but remember it's a southern climate, so they don't have any plowing or sand or salt thrown around. We're going to be staying for the next three nights in the city of Ponce, not only looking at lighthouses, but also other attractions. They liked lion statues down here in Puerto Rico. It looks like they must have had a contest. These lions are painted up and they're all around the city and they're all different. This is a fire museum, and they've got some beautiful old fire equipment in here. It turns out years ago, the fire department here put out a fire, and the residents were so happy, they built them some houses right next to the station and painted them red and black. This cross you are looking at is also an observation tower, and both this and the next picture were taken from my hotel room. We are in a boat on our way out to another island to visit our lighthouse. And this is the closest we're going to get to this one. We go by at both Cohen and Cummins.
This is our next lighthouse up on the top of the hill, and we're going to get our exercise on this one. Although it's much easier to fly over in a plane and take a photograph that way. This was the boat we were on that brought the whole group out in one trip. This is an orientation of all of the things that are available on this particular island. Of course, we only have one question. Which way to the light? This is a list of all the things you can do and can't do on the island. We only want to walk and take pictures, so we are okay. We now begin our hike to the top of the mountain. For a little over a half hour, we walked all along by the water on the level. This was quite easy. Then we made a sharp right turn and we started up the mountain. This is not too good to walk on. I describe it as a riverbed with no water. Needless to say, we stayed right on the trail. On our way up the trail, we came across this display, and what it says is termites get a bad rap. They only eat dead wood. They don't eat live trees. Up above there is a nest of what it looks like for termites, and this is related to lighthouses, so remember this. We have arrived. This is definitely a fixer-upper. If you look at the bottom part of the lantern room, those side panels, they're actually rusted right out. You can look right through them. This is interesting, but it's a little bit hard to read. But if you hold it just in the right angle, you can see that somebody evidently took a pipe like out of the wall. And what they scratched in there, the concrete, was U.S. Coast Guard, June 19, 1968. It's probably when they left the premises. We're up at the top now, looking back down at the dock where our boat is. That's where our boat is right there, but that canopy in the... Uh, the dock kind of blocked the view, but that's where we have to get back to. Somebody took my picture and sent it to me. One last look on our way back to the main island. This is our next lighthouse, Cabo Rojo, and we're going to get in this one.
This looks like a shaker room where they're able to hang the chairs up on the wall and then it makes it very easy to sweep the floor. Now that we've had our termite lesson, take a look at the construction now of the lighthouse. Cement walls, but wooden ceilings. This is how you would get up to the lantern room if it were open. There was no going into the lantern room, but from the outside you can see the light and then also the backup light. This is how they harvest salt from the ocean. They have these pools, they fill them up with salt water, they then let the sun evaporate the water, and then they use scoop tractors to scoop up the salt. These are the pools of salt water. These are recreational facilities you would see all around the island. Basically, there's a roof on top to keep you out of the hot sun. And if you look, they got bleachers and then they also have basketball courts, etc. This is our next lighthouse, Punta Hikaro. Unfortunately, we can walk around it and take pictures, gift shop down below, but we can't climb it. This lighthouse is in a very nice park. These are Puerto Rican stones. This is the second lighthouse with the same name built at this location, and you'll see why in a minute. This was our greeting at this particular lighthouse. And of course, we all jump off the bus with our cameras around our neck and tourists written all over our face. And the lady in the house right to the right of this comes right over to the bus. She says, do you want to see the whole lighthouse? And we say, well, sure. She said, just go in my yard right here, all along by the chain link fence, all around back, and you can see the whole thing. Boy, do we thank her. We didn't waste any time, but as you can see walking around here, you have to be careful because it does drop right off going to the ocean. This is the first lighthouse, Punta Boroquin, that uh, is basically the same location and name. And you can see what happens when you build them too close to the uh, ocean. So it didn't take us too long to climb this one and, and uh, look it all over.
This is where we headed for lunch on this particular day. This is a, an iguana, and they were all over the place. And it kind of reminded me, back home where I live, we have squirrels all over the place. On our way to the next lighthouse, we went by this underground cave, and we stopped here for about a 45-minute walk all through it. To get to the entrance of the cave, we ride down on this tram. In we go. In our travels in the cave, we came to this opening here where we could look back out and see daylight. Everyone made it out of the cave okay, and now we're on our way to the next lighthouse. And as we were going, we noticed this officer here running the uh, stoplights by hand. Evidently, they are not automated. Our next lighthouse is located in this historical park, and not only is the lighthouse nicely restored, but they also had a museum and they also had um, boats that uh, children could climb on. As we go in, notice the nice tile floors they have in this lighthouse. This is an old time diving suit with a hose pumping air in where you'd go down underwater and look for Spanish treasures. Up we go to the roof. Up on the roof, taking pictures of the lantern room.
This is Bacardi, and at the time of the tour in 2013, they said they made 90% of the world's rum. Uh, the tour and everything is free, except you don't get into the manufacturing plant. But they do have a nice museum and beautiful grounds. Where the arrow is there, that is the plane that we're going to go out. It's a pilot, one person in the front, two people in the back. It's the only practical way to see the three remaining lighthouses, and you'll see why as we do this. So fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. Off we go. The airport is in San Juan, that's where we've just taken off, and you can see there's an awful lot of water around here, so when you get hurricanes and things, there's not a lot of place to put the water. This is our first lighthouse, and you can see that when you abandon it, what happens is the termites eat the wood. Uh, so you don't really have any roof on these things, it's just the four walls. There's not a lot left. This is the second lighthouse, Spunta Faro. And if you look at the two arrows and find, follow the lines up where they intersect, that's where the lighthouse is. It's a little hard to see. Now, access to this lighthouse is further complicated by the fact that this is at a location of a former military base. And uh, during the different wars, they used this where the lighthouse is, to practice dropping bombs. And nobody has a clue how many bombs are in that area that haven't been exploded. Now with the bombs, this is further complicated by the fact that the uh, airspace above this location has to be a minimum of 5,000 feet above the ground. So you, they don't want any chance that you get too close to it. So this is about the best we can do, and uh, you have to use your imagination for the rest of it.
This is how they bring in petroleum products into uh, Puerto Rico. This is the storage area for all the petroleum products once they uh, offload the boat. This is our last lighthouse, and it's very hard to find. Remember we talked about the termites eating the wood. Well, if you look at this one here, it's been abandoned. So what has happened is they ate the roof off of it. Then, evidently, they had another snack, and they ate the floor, which was probably wood. They took care of that also. So the lantern room looks like it's been removed. So at the end of the day, you got to hit it from an airplane. It's just at the right angle to pick up the light to be able to see. And remember now, for the most part, if you write over it, you're only looking at the width of a cinder block. And, of course, trees now have grown inside it, so you got a forest all around it. Some of the earlier groups actually had trouble finding this because uh, they were flying over the mountains and, and it was nowhere there. Luckily, I was on one of the later groups. Somebody had the coordinates and all of a sudden the pilot said, we're here. And I'm thinking like, where are we? So I started shooting and lo and behold, I hit it. I'll be honest, I also have a longer lens on my camera, and I was sitting in the front seat, so I had some advantages, and the sun hit it at just the right angle. We're now going to take a quick walk through a rainforest looking at some of the plants and the insects and we did this on a nice sunny day. That that looks like a piece of straw on the leaf is actually a stick insect, and it is alive. This is just a short collection of images taken, uh, some of them out of the bus window as we moved around the islands and looked at things. Remember the Henry Ford story at the beginning, he not wanting mass transportation. I think he won. They do a lot of painting of their concrete on the roadways and bridges. This was one of the resorts we stayed at outside of the uh, cities. This is a typical room, and after I saw what the termites did, I was happy to have a tile floor. Where I live, 1,100 feet above sea level, I don't see any of these signs. You notice the properties are very colorful and they all seem to have individual fences around them.
early in the morning, these folks were out washing the streets. This is a telephone pole made out of concrete, and remember the termites. This is a mailbox. This is a live person walking around the street, and it wasn't even Halloween. 